Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now the end of November of 2021 and as we get closer to the very release of the Book of Boba Fett, a lot of fans are really looking forward to what's to come for the Mandalorian Season 3, the Ahsoka Tano series, as well as the Kenobi show that are very much anticipated by the Star Wars fans for the new universe ahead. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at Mike01 if you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there we do post a couple of fun and entertaining things on there from time to time and interact with you guys further so it's really all the more exciting has everything to do with the roadmap of star wars that's going to be unveiled at star wars celebration of 22 so next may all right this upcoming may i should say is going to be a big deal because we're going to be learning more about exactly which Star Wars TV shows and Star Wars movies are going to be releasing before or after other projects out there, and learning more about exactly how Lucasfilm is going to go about organizing that very expansive roadmap that's going to be unveiled next year that's going to lead all the way up until at least 2025 before they expand it further later down the road. So what's really exciting has everything to do with the fact that, yes, we already know that John and Dave are working on over a dozen Star Wars projects at the same exact time that are actually in varying degrees of, of course, you know, phases of principal photography, post-production, pre-production, etc. There's a lot of work being done on shows like Ahsoka, Mando, Season 3, and of course others out there that are about to debut on Disney Plus in the near future. However, what's really all the more exciting is exactly what George Lucas, Jon Favreau, and Dave Filoni have planned, and exactly what, of course, George Lucas recently approved to move forward with in this new expanded universe it's really gonna take fans by a lot of surprises and of course exactly how it's gonna really evolve star wars for the better so with that being said with both disney and lucasfilm now focused on their new star wars universe both john favreau and dave filoni are already hard at work on their new star wars tv shows that will be unveiled at star wars celebration next year However, recently creator George Lucas approved and is moving forward with something incredible for the future of Star Wars that is going to take the fans by surprise, in the years to come of course. One aspect that Lucas is actually moving forward with is best described to be the initiation of the young Luke Skywalker TV series that is currently dubbed as Star Wars Jedi Knight that will be teased at Star Wars Celebration next year. One thing that Lucas is said to be preparing for the new TV show is for Luke Skywalker to face many of his new foes that he did not in Star that he actually did in Star Wars Legends that will be brought back into the Mandoverse. Now it's best noted that however that Lucas is already pre-planning all of this with Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni for Luke Skywalker to hold a confrontation with new foes in the Star Wars universe. This is described to include characters like Prince Shizor, a reimagining of Abloth to be introduced in Star Wars Jedi Knight, as well as bringing in a new dark side user that is going to hold connections to Palpatine and his hidden empire. Now, both Mandalorian Season 3 and 4 are said to set up the young Luke Skywalker series, as well as the Ahsoka show playing a key role in leading up to the show that will tell the story of Luke's adventures. Now, further, it's noted that also the new series will be using an actor to recast Luke Skywalker instead of using a CGI model version of Luke, like how it was done in Mandalorian Season 2 and how it's going to be also in Season 3. This actor is already geared towards Sebastian Stan and that Lucas has already been in the talks with Stan about portraying the role of Luke Skywalker in great detail for the planned show that they want to release sometime in 2024. There will be a big show that they want to start off as 12 episodes to see exactly how the fans enjoy it with the possibility of it becoming a multi-season show. Now further, Lucasfilm is said to have been surprised with the excitement surrounding the Kenobi series and exactly how that lifted off, and now they want to actually raise the bar with Luke Skywalker returning to face new foes directly from Star Wars Legends. Lucas Favreau and Filoni are also planning to make a young Ben Solo as one of the side characters, as well as Mara Jade and Luke's son, of course portraying a major role in the show that will be teased in the Mandoverse beforehand. 
Star Wars Jedi Knight is described to also focus on Luke's Jedi students across the galaxy and at his Jedi Temple, and that this story won't only be about Luke himself, but also will feature his followers that look up to him and will become a part of his journey. Lucasfilm is also preparing and planning on who to cast for a young Lorsan Tekka, and are also in the process of including the Knights of Ren as a side villainous group that will actually explain more about those mysterious figures that ties directly into the sequels. Okay, so first things first, I know some fans are probably going to roll their eyes when, you know, you heard about the Knights of Ren and how they're trying to gear towards them being a side villain, per se. Obviously, a lot of fans loved the Knights of Ren before they were ever even really introduced in the sequel trilogy. When we got that little glimpse of them in The Force Awakens, a lot of fans were intrigued only because of the mystery surrounding them, right? We really didn't know exactly who they were at the time. Were they Force-sensitive? Were they not? And later, as time passed by, we only learned more about them in the comics, specifically, that they originally followed a guy named Ren, who, by the way, was a Dark Side user, and was eventually killed and taken over by Ben Solo. Now, moving on to the reimagining of Abloth. I don't know if you guys know about Abloth, but they are doing a reimagining of this character exactly what that means we're not quite sure does it mean that they're changing the name does it mean that they're changing the design of the character the origin of the character we're not quite sure the only thing that we do know is that it is going to take place obviously in a different time period the thing about this all right of them really moving forward with a young luke series is actually pretty smart because it's not just going to be about luke i can understand how an entire show only dedicated to Luke Skywalker would be maybe a bit too much to some fans out there, to the point where you might oversaturate it doing that. It's the same thing with the Kenobi TV series. It's not just going to be about Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, strictly. It's going to include Darth Vader, the Inquisitors. It's going to also include, you know, Uncle Owen in there, you know, Owen Lars. Uh, a lot of things like that to kind of compensate, to kind of not oversaturate Kenobi. And they're doing the same exact thing here with Luke. They want to focus on his Jedi students. They want to focus on some of the villains. They want to also focus on Lor San Tekka and some other characters that surround Luke's life. That to me is very interesting and I think that they're going to go about it a very detailed and properly planned way. I think that they're really going to succeed at this. Again, we will be learning more about Jedi Knight at Star Wars Celebration this upcoming May. So look forward to that, mark your calendars because it's gonna be a big event. It's gonna probably be the biggest celebration to date because of how many TV shows are gonna be introduced, how many new Star Wars movies, new books, novels, and comics. I've said this time and time again, 2022 and 2023 are gonna be by far the biggest years for Star Wars by Disney specifically. And I think that what they're ultimately trying to do is that they're really trying to create this constant stream of successful projects. And if they can do that within three years, they can turn things around easily where fans are going to be reunited and looking back at the era of the sequel trilogy as the past completely. So with that being said, you know, let me know what you think about this overall approach to Jedi Knight by George Lucas, how he approved a lot of these ideas, and exactly how Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are already going to work for the Mandoverse to actually provide a lot of teases and revelations that's going to lead up to the show to be dropped in 2024. It may seem like a very far away, but it's really not all that far away. We're already basically in 2022. Before you know it, it's going to be 24. The biggest question of all is exactly when in 24 do they plan on dropping this? It's most likely going to be the end of that year, so technically 25. But anyways, guys, you know, like I say, drop a comment below. Let me know about all this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.